German Health Minister Jens Spahn, of course, very unhappy with this situation. Let's break this down with you, uh, for you some more, with Jakob Kierkegaard. He's a senior fellow at the German Marshall Fund and the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Mr. Kierkegaard, welcome. I guess what everybody wants to know at this point is how could this happen? Why is the EU more affected by distribution issues than countries that have placed individual orders? Well, I think it's uh, one is a matter of scale, and I think it's also pretty clear that there appears to have been, uh, if you like, the wrong emphasis on at least some of the uh, EU negotiations, uh, namely that uh, obviously at the EU level, you are a bigger player, so you have economies of scale and you should be uh, able to get a lower price. Uh, however, uh, in the middle of a pandemic, uh, price is not an issue. The only thing that really matters is speed. Uh, so I, for instance, uh, think it would have been much smarter uh, from the EU's perspective to accept uh, to pay much more uh, per uh, doses, uh, because whatever you paid would have been made up uh, in terms of the money you save by being uh, hopefully able to reopen the economy uh, sooner. So there's been probably uh, a little bit of a wrong emphasis early on. And uh, whereas other countries with individual political leaders, either in the UK or Israel, that are clearly fighting uh, uh, for their political lives, uh, had a sense of urgency and were willing to pay much more. And they, at least initially, are reaping the supply benefits of having done so. What can the EU now do about this? They're threatening to tighten controls over exports. Will that work? Uh, no, I don't think that will work. I think that will be very, very damaging because it ignores the fact that uh, vaccines are subject to complex international supply chains. So if you started reducing, uh, you know, export controls and things like that, you are likely to face similar from other countries that just reduces overall, uh, you know, uh, vaccine production capacity available in the very short term. No, actually, I think uh, what EU governments should be doing uh, is to ensure that the vaccines that are actually distributed at the moment uh, are also injected into people's arms. Uh, if you look at the, uh, sh you know, if we take what the EU Commission says that they are distributing uh, available vaccines on a population basis uh, across the EU and Norway, then uh, there is, in my opinion, no excuse for uh, other EU countries not to have uh, actual injection levels roughly similar to what you have in Denmark or Malta, uh, which are somewhere between three and a half to four and a half percent of the total population. In most EU countries, on average, it's less than two percent. Uh, in Germany, it's a little higher. But actually, uh, there are some uh, uh, countries that are doing far better. Uh, and it is not uh, because some countries are injecting more or less of uh, the second shot. In fact, the country that have injected most people with a second shot is Denmark. Uh, so that's not really uh, the issue here. The issue here is that there are some countries that have better practices in the actual rollout of the scarce vaccines. So if you wanted to improve uh, able ability to vaccinate tomorrow or next week, that's where government should look. Uh, and of course, in the, in the longer term, there's no doubt that unless uh, additional supplies are coming from Pfizer, uh, Moderna, AstraZeneca, etc., then you Europe will face a problem. But in the very short term, it is as much about rollouts as it is about uh, actual vaccine availability in many uh, EU members. All right. So threats are not the right approach, according to Jakob Kierkegaard of the German Marshall Fund. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.